So this is a tutorial on 3D Studio Max for the new Populate that they have had for a long time, but it's a lot better now. First off, you can't just go into the perspective view, Alt-W, and then type a P, let's say, and then hold the Alt key in the middle mouse wheel. You can't just build something without thinking about the units and then put a Populate object on it. What's going to happen is if you go to Populate, and then you define a flow or an idle area, let's say, just a place where they kind of hang out and stand. If I do that on top of this geometry, right? Problem is it's really, really small. I didn't think about it. Why doesn't this work? Well, first, let's click on the box and go over here. It says it's seven by seven feet and almost a foot tall. To set up units in 3D Studio Max, you should always go into Customize, Unit Setup. If you use U.S. Standard, if you're in the U.S., USA, if you use decimal feet, it's the easiest. If you do decimal inches and all this, it gets kind of hard to use, or decimal inches, it's crazy. So for now, decimal feet should be fine. Let's take a look. Let's make a box now and think about it. Let's just drag a box on the ground, no matter what size it is, and stop. There it is. Come on over here to the modify area and look at the length, width, and the height. In a room with a couple people, it'd be nice to have 16 by 16 feet and maybe a quarter of a foot high for the floor itself. And that's the beginning. I middle mouse wheel out, or I can press down on the middle wheel and move around so I can see a little bit more. Now we go up here to modeling, freeform, selection, object paint, and populate. Let's define idle area. Let's make a box to make it a little bit easier. Now if we drag, you notice that there's maybe a person. On that. Now it doesn't render. When you go to render settings, it'll just show the box. So if I went here and I did a quick render, you'd only see the purple box. It's just a helper to let you know where things are. So let's modify that idle area, and you can rename it if you want, but let's modify it and see density. Less density, or all the way to the right, more density. Single to groups, right? All the way to the left, you'll have more singles, not people talking to each other. Groups of threes or twos, etc. Males or females, orientation. See how that rotates? That doesn't really matter. And spread. Face, we can do all that. Randomization seed, let's just leave that for now. Now that we have three people and a 16 by 16 space, we can even modify this and make it a different size, but for right now I think we're okay. We could scale it if we wanted to. That might help a little bit for the amount of people but you want to make sure it doesn't accidentally go over the edge of what you've built for the people. You know, so in other words, if this is a walking space, you don't want them to walk through the wall. So let's go here to simulate and look at the bottom of the screen. There's zero to 100 frames. Down here, you'll see, <clears throat> you'll see this to the zero point and a timeline you can change. Let's just make this Start time, end time, a single frame for architecture, a rendering, zero. Technically that made that one frame, but zero to one, let's say. Zero to one, okay. Now let's go to simulate and simulate that one frame. Type in one and simulate. It takes a second to load the people themselves and the parts and some of the textures, and now we'll build them. Shouldn't take too long. All right, so we have five people idling. Let's rotate this. All right, there they are. And then you can change the orientation and re-render them. Say I want to change the orientation that way and simulate, simulate it again. See, now that it's in the buffer, it's easier to, to rotate it, etc. Now let's say display, edit selected, bake them, do etc. So many different things. Now each person, this is neat. What if I didn't like the elbow on that guy? Edit selected, re-simulate, re-simulate. Different poses that it has. They're not all the best or the worst, but you can re-simulate. You can delete it, switch the resolution. You can regenerate just that person and the appearance of that person. Oh, I want this person, and how much I want to be random. 
a little random or very specific. So if I want specific with a slight variation to this, this person, just start to do that. Maybe I want this Asian person. And now he's off a little bit. It's like a game uh, creation toolkit. It's really cool. Take a second. It loads the geometry out of almost a gigabyte of data that you download off of Autodesk site. And when it's ready, you'll see this new person that it generated. And then close this. Let's take a look with the Alt key and the middle mouse wheel to rotate around. There you go. Now if we render, the only thing that's going to render is that purple floor and the people. Nice. Next thing we want to do is go Alt W so we can see a side view. Let's see how tall these people are. Let's create a box this way, right? And out a little bit. Let's make, not the length, but in our case it is. Let's make a six foot box and the width is maybe 2.5 feet. And the height or the depth in this case is another 0.25 feet. There you go. That is as big as a short door, let's say. So these people aren't quite six feet tall. That guy's close. So is that person. Press F3 and you can see it in this mode. Alt W so you can see a little bit um, larger what you're doing. Middle mouse wheel down, scroll in once, twice. Now you can, it's a cute little tool to help you. That guy's a little over six foot tall, and so is that, that guy. So let's go back to camera. Oops, I didn't build one. Let's go to perspective and build a camera. Let's go over here to cameras and look for standard or Arnold. Right now we'll do standard. Target camera. Let's use 25, 28 or 35 millimeter camera and show the cone that we're building. So we build in the top view with T. Um, stretch out with the left click all the way to the center. Now let's take a look and press C for camera. Here's a cool thing we can do. If you hold down the middle mouse wheel. So what was happening here? I'm at the very edge of the pink box. That's what it is. And you'll see that this way. See, I'm at the very edge of the pink box. Let me press F3 to show you in color. I'm here, F3. I'm inside the box. So let's do this. Let's press W. Right click in this view to make sure you're using it. Press W and pull it out. So you're not touching the box or inside of it. And then here, right click for this view and pull up. Now you can go in here. This is really neat. Press on your keyboard the arrow keys. Press forward. Press backwards, dolly and trucking. Now, as you're pressing forward, also left click and move your mouse as you're moving. Now use the left key while you're holding down the front key. Just the left key, pull back. See what we're doing? Can you see that in 3D? Let me pull back the here with the middle mouse wheel, no clicking. Just so you can see a little clearer what I'm, I'm doing here. And then left and right left mouse button and turning see what it's doing if you do both at the same time up and down at the same time now watch this forward with a shift forward with i mean down with a shift key so you can raise it up let go of the shift key go down if you don't know what i'm doing pay attention to the keys that are being pressed on the top right side with the display by Kamek, the overlay. All right, so let's take this and delete that six foot marker. Press the delete key. Let's take a look at these people and let's truck out with the front key first, then back arrow key to see a little bit more of them. All right, now let's render that. Pretty cool, huh? Render, boom. It's fast. Let's take a next step. Let's create a light, or maybe we'll go here. Let's modify our render setup. Right now we're in scan line, which is the CPU. Simple, very simple, no ray tracing, no lights, no shadows, nothing. Let's go to Arnold, the built-in production level renderer, okay? First thing you notice in Arnold is that when it renders, it has a problem with the textures that are old, that are from the older version of Max that those populate characters definitely have. So let's take a look, let's render, and it'll complain. 
unless I've already changed it. Let me take a look. So far, we don't see anything. It takes a while to cache the textures on those people, etc. So there it is. It's done. It did use it. Now let's add. Notice that there's light, but there's no light in the scene. Arnold gives a generic light. So let's go here to lights. Not photometric, but Arnold. Object height, Arnold light. Now on the top view, let's left click and drag on the side. So I have a target. If you don't drag, you don't have a target for the light. Let's use the move key, select and move, which is W. Right click in this view and move it up. Let's see what we can do if we modify that light. And then down here, you'll see intensity and exposure, very similar to the way lights. Let's render this and we're gonna definitely see in this view, right click. And let's render and we're gonna see a black box basically. Very, very dark. Now, it's like a real camera, so it needs more light. So let's go here to rendering in the menu at the top, environment, the same way it's been for like 20 years. Exposure control. To simplify this, just go to logarithmic for now and don't change these settings. And let's take a view and it adjusts for the light that's in the scene. Still dark. All right, I'm gonna move this over and the render. Still dark, right? Let's make sure that light's clicked and we're in this view, right click, so it's orange around it, right? And intensity and exposure. What if I raise the intensity to say three? The, the final intensity will be 768. Seems like a big number, but let's preview and see if it is. Definitely isn't. Let's raise it up to five for the intensity. Now it's at 1,280, let's take a look. Not much of a difference. Don't use these for right now for the physical scale, etc. You can learn those later. But let's change, this is crazy. Let's change the exposure to nine and watch the multiplication change here versus the small increments here. Let's go to 10. Huge change. Now let's render. See that? Let's go one more to say 11. It's already at 10,000 before we were under 1,000. Now let's render with a logarithmic scale. Now you're starting to actually see the way things render. If you have a problem with this, you should definitely go into your render settings right here and check something very special. If you go into the Arnold renderer and you look at the very Thought it was here uh system okay there we go legacy 3d studio map support so if you add some textures that you thought were going to work but they didn't that's definitely going to help okay that's max to arnold etc and this advanced stuff you really don't have to worry about so let's make one texture really quick we're going to build that in here these textures come up different if you're in the arnold mode if you look up in here for our setup right if you change this different textures and materials are available here so this is only available because we're in arnold mode so let's go to a physical material and when you do this you will notice that it comes over <laughs> there we go give it a second all right so now it's buffered so we go over here and move this out of the way there we are Double click and the properties will come up over here. Let's choose something simple. This is nice, right? Let's try, I don't know, for the floor. It's a little busy, but it's fun. Now that we have that, move this out of the way. Select the floor, the purple floor. And it's purple because the wireframe is purple up here. I'll show you the right click right there. And you can change it with a left click, but we don't need to do that. Now, marble floor, the purple floor is selected. And we press here, assign material to selection. Now let's take a look. It's different. That's the base color, it's blue. If you wanna see that marble material, sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. You can click here. 
and it'll show the material in the viewport. Let's see if that does that. Oops, put the wrong one. No, that's the background. Here's the material in the viewport. Now let's take a look. There you go. Now let's see what that renders like. Let's close this out of the way. Here. Look at that. It's pretty nice. I think this kind of begs for a second light and or walls. Now, in a physical world with architecture, you know that in film, television, or regular architecture, we build other walls to bounce light. So right now it's just a black void doing nothing. So let's build a wall here up a little bit. doesn't really matter the height. But for argument's sake, let's make it an 8-foot ceiling. Its length could be a little bit further than that wall. We could just make it 16. And its width, again, it doesn't matter. It could be 2.25. Now in the top view, you can just wing it and press W and move it over until it, press F3, you can see the wireframe, until it overlaps through that floor, the light pinkish gray line. Or you can go to the corner and snap in and you can do all that. Notice you have to go down here and click in the red and green lines to do X, Y movement. So let's do that and bring it down and zoom in. And we could do a 2.5 D snap. Let's do that. 2.5. Now, why is that working? Because if you right click on the 2.5 D or 3D or 2D, you can click to vertex. These are vertexes on the edges of things. Pivot point, bounding box, etc. All this different stuff. Now let's take a look at that wall. Let's make that wall a material that's a physical material that likes to bounce light. Physical material. Right here. Double click. That brings us to the other material. And let's make it, uh, I don't know. Satin paint. So it's reflective, but not too crazy. And the color would be, I don't know, like maybe an off-white kind of a thing, like a, a dull yellow white color. Now make sure you have that wall selected and assign material to selection in the screen, in the scene. Let's see how that reflection helps in this render, if it does at all, which it will. All right, so we've got to leave another bounce, but we definitely need a little bit more light. So how are we going to do that? Easy. Let's take this light by left clicking on it. Press T for the top view, scroll wheel out, middle wheel, and then you can scroll wheel. Hold the shift key down. Let's take off that snap for 2.5D. Hold the shift key down and have an opposing light. And let's look where the wall is. That's where the wall is. So maybe we should do this light this way. So it actually hits the wall. Let's look in the front. Where's that light? Okay, it's down. I mean, it's up higher. So let's get the center point of this light modified. This is Arnold Light 2. So let's click here. They're in the same point, the two lights. That. Arnold Light 2 target, you can see right here, right? So we're gonna move the target up a little bit, right about there. If you want in this view, if you have a good GPU, you can go to standard or high quality. And you could use the scene lights if possible, if your GPU allows it. In this example, I can't. So let's render this really quick. The standard renderer doesn't do it, but there is a real-time one we can use. Let's let's close this. Let's render this out and take a look at this beautiful illumination now. That's pretty cool. Let's do one more thing, just for fun. Behind them, let's put an um, like a fluorescent or LED tube light. So we're going to go to Create Standard Primitives Cylinder, and we're going to look, what view is this? Let's close this. We're going to look in the front view, sideways. Take the grid off so we can see a little bit more. Middle wheel move. 
and let's build a little circle. And you'll notice as I'm building here in the top view, get rid of the grid, F3 so you can see what I'm building. Let's drag out a light by letting go. Press W to move it. There you go. Now let's bring it down just a tiny bit. Right click in this view. Right about maybe behind the person. That's kind of cool. It looks really neat. I know it's not where a light would be because it would obscure it. People would touch it, etc. But it's pull it out the tiniest bit from the wall. Let's take a look at the length. Uh, it says height, but that's the length. Let's make an, uh, I don't know, a six feet long. Six, just six. And the radius is fine at 0.97. I'll just call it 0.1 for instance, 0.1 foot. There, one tenth of a foot. That's just great. Now let's make a new material. Let's make a physical material. Double click on it. Here, let's choose a type of self-illuminated white. You know, I think I don't think they have that here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a. I'll just keep it standard. Now in here, I'm going to make it click on the color and bring down the whiteness, just the white. And it's it's going to be like this sort of kind of bright white. Let's get rid of this shading so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. Standard. Okay. So I'm going to apply it to that tube. I have it selected. That's not going to do much, but wait until you see what I can do. There we go. So there's white. It looks like it's a light bulb that's uh, a light tube that's off. So let's have fun. Let's go in here into that material. Well, let's start to do fun stuff like name it. White underscore no spaces in the names. White light. Scroll down with your middle mouse wheel. And look for stuff like emission, luminescence, uh, self-illumination, etc. Okay. So, right about here. Emission. We could make a material, etc. But in emission itself, let's just put one. It's going to emit at 1500 CDM tubes for luminescence. And the whiteness of it, you can get into Kelvin and learn yellow lights that are tungsten, the old light bulbs to LEDs. So there you go. It's super bright white now. Let's see what it does here. Can't really see, but let's render. Let's take a look. Look at that. That is super cool. So not only is this self-illuminating, it doesn't have to be a light because it's automatically creating brightness. It doesn't create shadows, but it does create brightness in the scene. So that's bright as it gets. That's crazy. But let's do something else now. Let's now create a light that's an Arnold light, right? And if we look about what type it is, it should be able to allow us, let's take a look here. Yeah, Arnold light type instead of quad I'm going to do cylinder this is fun watch this so I build a light here and now it's a vertical one and now we just rotate it now instead of just randomly rotating see all the numbers are halves let's not do that let's use this angle snap tool rotate it and let go at 90 zoom in with a middle mouse wheel press W and move this to right here really really close to the light yes i know it's not physically physically accurate but there it is let's scroll in here or let's look at the top view for instance that's better okay there's the arnold light there's the distance so let's modify that arnold light and its height can be again remember it was six feet six feet and just move down by going over the y-axis let's see what that does it might be too bright so let's take a look and right click here so you know you're going to render the correct view otherwise it would have rendered that because we worked on that last and render now it creates shadows it's just beautiful 
At least I think it creates shadows. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe that's just the color of them. But I mean, <laughs> look at that. It's crazy. So let's scroll down and make sure there's shadows. Cast shadows, etc. Yeah, that's just wow. So it is bright. It's a little too bright. So what would happen if we took that that, that object, the light itself, and went to the materials, or went to the wrong thing? Scroll down a little bit. And we change, there we go. Let's change the CDM to, to for now, 500. So it's not blasting, it's a third as powerful. You play with the numbers, you start to learn. Yeah, there you go. See how you sort of see the light inside of the actual light that we're seeing? The, the, the light from Arnold, the tube light. And since it's a physical object they put there, it's casting this cool kind of shadow on the sides from the edges that you would have it. So one last thing I think we should do for fun is change this cylinder light, um, the light itself, right? And the intensity and the exposure. Let's change the intensity to three times the 11 exposure. Goes down severely, fine. And then let's take this tube that we have and hold the shift key down and slide it down and make a copy. Let's scroll in and do that. Let's take a look. All right, now for the height or the distance, let's make it a quarter of a foot long. See? And then we can do that to the other side. Let's do that. Let's hold the shift key down and move that. Make a copy. Press Alt W while we're working so we can see a little bit more. Middle mouse wheel to move. Only on the y-axis. Try not to actually click on the geometry of the bulb itself and scroll out maybe. Now let's get a little bit closer and scroll out. There you go. So we have that. We hold the shift key down for the other one. Let's change the wireframe color. So even if we're in wireframe, we can see what we're doing. Maybe the red. See? All right, now let's click on that and on that. And let's make a dull silver color for the edges of the light. Let's move this physical material. Hold the shift key down and make a copy. Double click. And we'll call it light base the base of the light. And let's make it a boring, no saturation silver. Like maybe like that. We could even make it metal, like aluminum or something like that. Matte aluminum. Same kind of difference. That's a little too colorful, but for now we'll do it. They're selected. We use this tool right here to assign material to selection. Let's press C to go back to camera. Try to close these so you can see what we're doing. That looks pretty good. It's kind of broke off by our head, but let's even middle mouse wheel to move a little bit so we can see the light a little bit better. Let's render that and take a look. That's pretty cool. It's got a bit of realism going on there. Okay, let's press escape. Let's do this. Let's look at the top. All right. Now, let's click here, hold the shift, uh, the control key down here and here and go over here. This is select and link. Watch what this does. Select on anything linked, see, and let go on the bulb. Now, go back to the move tool and select the bulb itself and watch what happens. That's pretty cool. Since the bulb is our center point now, Let's go to Modify, right here, the Hierarchy, affect the pivot po point only, and center to the center of the long bulb. That makes it kind of easier to think about what you're doing. Let's look at the, let's double click, it selects the children, hold the control key down for the wall, and look in the camera view. I pressed F3 to go to the wireframe again. Let's hold the Select and Rotate. rotate. Isolation for 90 degrees and hold the shift key down. That moves all of them at once and makes a copy at, as you can see, 90 degrees. Make a copy of everything. You could make instances, but for now a copy. 
go to the top view, everything's still selected. Go to the move tool, or as you see, press the W key and move like this. Now let's get really close. And by I, for now, because you don't want to do all this crazy stuff. I mean, you could do 2.5D, that's fine. Oops. Control Z gets you back to what you selected. All right, so 2.5D, click. Now we have another wall. Let's look at the camera view. See? F3, we've got another wall. Let's do it one more time. Let's select all this, which we have. Top view. Hold the shift key down and move it on the Y. But see, now we're still in that 2.5D. That's not good. So take the 2.5D off. Move it down, roughly. There's a copy. Now rotate it 90 degrees right here. Uh, 180 degrees, I should say. Weird things happen. If you go up and down, it doesn't know what you're doing. Left and right to rotate beyond 90 degrees in the interface. There you go. W to move again. Now we can... Remember, the pink line isn't the box. That's just the populate area. 2.5 lock. Take that corner vertex. Move it to there. That's a little long, but that's okay. In that case, not a problem. All right, press C for camera. We should be doing pretty good. Yeah. Press C for camera. Look what we've got. Now that's going to be way too much light for that scene because we have the other lights. So let's take a look at the render and go for it. Oh, I think that's cool. Really, really cool. It seems like they're stuck in a art prison or something. Let's press escape. And let's do one thing at, at the uh, camera. Press P for perspective and press U for user view. It's more of an isometric. Hold the middle mouse wheel down, then Alt mouse wheel gives us more of a rotation. Go over here and maximize the position of everything. Scroll in. Let's do this. Let's create, just for fun, a box right here. Now let's take that 2.5D off. A box right here. And bring it up. So we're going to make this length by width. Let's make it a foot by a foot and make the height eight feet. Or in this case, maybe a little taller, 10 feet. Let's look in the front view. Press the middle mouse wheel into the screen. F for front view. F3 so you can see what you're doing. And let's move it up to the base of the floor. See this gray line? And then this, this is the uh, placement for the characters. That's still the floor. You can even go underneath a little bit if you get, if you don't think you're quite on it. All right, top view. Let's take a look. There's a person, 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 person. So let's let's make the pillar closer to the wall so it won't touch the person. All right. Scroll out. Hold the shift key down. Do the same thing on the other side as much as you can. That looks pretty good. And in this case, we can have an instance. Hold the control key down. Select both of them. Hold the shift key down. And move this ahead yeah, about a little bit more. Maybe there. Now, let's make a copy of both of these two, three total times. So that'll be one, two, three, four. Boom. It's not quite perfect. So let's press C for camera and take a look. for camera. Now what I really wanted to do is put on the sides so we don't interfere with the view of the people. So let's do this and you can take a look at what I'm doing. I'm going to select all these positions, hold the control key down for the rest of those, and overlap because right now we're in overlap mode for selection. Rotate. We're still on the degree lock, 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Now, press the left key here, select just those boxes, 
and adjust those with my control key. W to move, and just get them a little bit closer. Like, maybe there. That should be fine. Let's see what we got now. Ah, uh, yes. The gallery of poles. <laughs> now, let's make a material for them. I don't know what would be good, but... Uh, let's make another one. Let's drag this over with the shift key. Double click. And we'll call it... I don't know. Poles. We don't know what we're going to make. Let's. What are we going to make it of? Let's take a look. Something fun. <laughs> Stained copper. It's kind of neat. A little too reflective, but we'll double click on the name of it. It's kind of neat. They're all selected, I believe. Nope, they are not. My mistake. So I'll select these guys. F3 so you can see. Control. I'll select these guys. F3 again. Physical material. And apply to those. Now, the camera's here. It could be any deal. It doesn't matter. Close this out. And let's render it. Let's take a look. That's awesome. So if things were slightly less re uh, reflective and they were more matte, we could still get this like beautiful bouncing volume. I still want to bring, I still want to build a top or a roof to it. And that will uh, get rid of all these lights that I've built that were exterior, the Arnold lights, but we can bring, them, we could position them in a little bit more. Let me escape this real quick. You can see Arnold bug right there, but it's still pretty amazing because that's the, the the tube width is a little bigger than that area, I think. So let me look here at this light or these. Yeah, it's a little too wide. So I'm going to modify uh, the radius to like 0.1. And if you can't see what I'm doing, I'm going to do a left view. The Arnold light left. Or an R for right view. Let's do this. Maybe there's no shortcut key anymore for that. Yeah, left view. All right, so that's the Arnold light. It was too big before. Oh. The height is six, as usual. All right. So let's get the other one, the other Arnold light here. See how big that is? And it cuts into the, to the uh, pillars we made. Let's make that radius 0 0.1. There. Same size as the fake light geometry we built. Next up, let's build a ceiling by clicking on here. Or maybe in the side view, right? Hold the shift key down. And I guess we can put it right there. Kind of boxes them off and make a copy. And make it a different material, like some simple, boring light that'll bounce nicely. So we go back into here, and we look for that boring off-white, double-click on it, our ceiling selected, and we apply it. Now, don't forget, our lights are now going to be crossed off. So let's look at the side, right-click here and look at the top, and make sure those lights can get in there. It has to be lower. That'll be a light from a hallway, maybe. And maybe not a floor level, more like that. And this, and maybe bring it in a little bit. We don't need two. Let's just use one. Delete. So we'll just use one, and it'll come from here off a little bit for fun. And it'll create some shadows from those poles from where it's coming. And the side view, you can see that it's kind of evenly matched. Right there. There. Now there's a, there's a wall, so I guess my brain didn't see that in 3D. There you go. So now if we look at this, the front, this is the top. Let's look at the left view. There. So the light's kind of shining in there. If you have a higher level graphics card, you can see the shadows real time or the a live interaction you can do too. Uh, let's render, take a look. Yeah, that's awesome. Look at those shadows coming from the light that comes from this 2B kind of panel thing going on. I mean, in fact, let's just, for art's sake, right? We have that end that looks like it's in virtual reality. Let's look at the top and select the top and the bottom. 
both are now selected because I on the top view it overlaps both right now let me go here into wireframe view now let's let's take the sides too let's hold the control key down for that side and this side and let's just move them right click here out now we have an extension see how it almost matches right there so good we don't want that geometry to overlap because it's not quite perfect how i built it so let's look a little closer and pull that one out a little bit more i don't want it to just have that weird render thing when things overlap but i also don't want a big gap again you could 2.5d i'm not going to so for right now that's fine let's take a look that floor looks wacko because when you copy something, it doesn't always copy the texture or the place, uh, the material or the genome. So let's click on here and apply that. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. We still have to tell it, hey, I want to see that material on the viewport. Oh, oh, now it's back. And then we click on here. Make sure that extra floor is selected. Now it's that stuff too. That's probably a glitch inside the, the program. So let's take a look in the camera view, both the camera view, and render. See what that light tunnel does. Hmm. Let's see what's going on with that. Let me press escape. The walls are there. And I left a little bit of a gap by accident. Let's look at the top view. W, T, T. We get those walls. And I'll scroll in a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit of a gap. I could 2.5D if I had to. There. All right. So I shouldn't be lazy. Ah, you know what I did? I moved the ceiling, which is that boring color, and the floor, but I used the 2.5D match. So there's still there was still a floating floor. Let's take the ceiling and the floor. And then at the top view, hold the shift key down and take 2.5D off and just move it. Pretty cool, huh? And then let go right around here. And there's a copy. That's what the problem was. And now let's take a look. Because the, the floor and the ceiling aren't matching in the spots that they should. So like, where's the floor? move the ceiling back let's go to the camera here let's move forward and back just to find out where we're at yeah so the floor and the ceiling weren't the, exactly the same place there we go and just move that until it matches see it's close and get closer so that's going to be really neat for the rendering light values and stuff so let's take a look this and this obviously are off a little tiny bit you can see it Ta -da! oh i think the line's that pink line aha i got confused by that shape that i built for the uh people the color let's take a look for the lines f3 f4 on top there you go it's pretty good let's render it Oh, that looks awesome. So good. There's more light bouncing, more refraction. It's not falling into zero space. That's really, really good. All right. Well, that's the answer for now. I mean, you could put more another light here or take the other light off. Let's take that other light off. Let's, you know, so you could save this project as you go. File. Save as, and I'll call this, uh, you know, my PC... Projects, 3D, new folder, populate Arnold, Arnold example, and that's the ping. So, Arnold example one. All right, so it's saved, but now I want to go back into the top view and change this render. And I just want to get rid of this light. I could either just press delete or I could just turn it off. Now let's render. Right click into the camera view. 
and render, see what it looks like without that light going in there. So now it's just the light from those sides. It's a little more dramatic. Uh, so it's a different kind of a feeling. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, have fun with it. And that's about it for this tutorial. It's long. It's 45 minutes long. I hope it helped.